Well, after a long break over the Christmas holidays, I figured I'd better get back to some of these training clips. These are as much for my benefit as for the rest of the world, as I find my learning is best accomplished by teaching. So, forcing myself to explain these things to others always helps my understanding, and it uh, often points out some deficiencies in my own knowledge that uh, I needed to correct. So this one's on Power Query. That's the fifth of the Power Tools from Excel. I mean, you know about PowerPoint. You probably heard of Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map, and now comes Power Query. It's actually the one I, the one that I think completes the circle in the terms of this Microsoft Excel BI reporting tool. It was missing that key item that Power Query is able to handle, which is the actual acquisition of the data. In fact, many people have called it a self-serve ETL process, and I think that's actually a pretty good term. Um, I can I know my database people and my data administrators freak out over that sort of stuff about itchy, un unsophisticated people doing this kind of work, but the truth is they're doing it right now anyways. What do you think they've been doing for the last 20 years in order to get those reports out every day? So there's nothing new here. All we're doing is showing them how to do it better, and in a way, we're actually increasing data quality by showing them how to do it using corporate data, skipping all these manual extracts and offline spreadsheets that just thrive. So uh, both parties should be happy on the techno technologist side and on the client side. But uh, it's a hard sell. So what is Power Query and how do you use it? That's kind of what I wanted to cover here in very simple terms. So Power Query is the part that gets involved with these step one of these three critical steps, um, getting the data. We all know how to play with the data and produce tables and reports and charts, and we have all those power tools and all sorts of other things we can use. And now we have the ability to share it or post it in SharePoint and, and share it on dashboards, etc. But the weakness was always about the actual data itself. How do we actually get this data and then work with it? Most often it was done by people running manual queries, or if they're a little bit more sophisticated, maybe they can get SQLs themselves. But it limited what people could do with it, which is why everyone used manual processes, because it simply was the only option. Power Query now makes that part of a corporate solution, but a corporate self-serve desktop solution. So Power Query is a free add-in from Microsoft. Um, you can just go out and download it 32-bit, 60-bit, 64-bit. Uh, it works in 2010 or 2013, so just make the uh, appropriate choice. It, once you add it, you'll see the um, query being added, or the Power Query. It's an, Once you activate it, of course, you can turn these things off and on. I've got analytics for Twitter up now, as well as Inquire plus Power Pivot. Uh, but I, so you just need to turn it on and get going. I created a couple of sample files just to make this demo um, rather than try and make it directly related to corporate data, but I've, I've taken the data from corporate sources and, and the examples I used, given the season, Christmas season, was liquor distribution in uh, the province of British Columbia in Canada. So it's information that is held in an open data source. I just brought it over to my desktop to play with it. Uh, but in truth, I could have just as easily set it up to run directly off the corporate source because it is a, an accessible source. Now, there's many options in Power Query, which I'm not going to cover, but essentially what it clearly shows here is here are the places and types of data that it can go out and get um, from SharePoint lists, from Facebook, which is a very interesting place, the Azure data market, database types it can import data or link to any of these sources from any of those the standard files that you're probably using excel access um, csv text you name it um, it'll even go out on the web and get it if you can type in the direct url but what it's doing is it's not just going out and getting static data it's creating a, da a linkage to that location now assuming that location is a somewhat stable site, let's assume that it's your corporate data source, um, then you're building from that source. You'll never have to copy paste or extract data on your own. The system is going to do that for you, which is where I see the, the huge value, because I know how much time is spent in my organization on this one step alone. It's all being manually driven. People are always running off with spreadsheets. So for people that are concerned about the manual process and the time and effort being wasted, Power Query is a, a perfectly suited tool to eliminate that.
and uh, we're talking about some major savings in, in uh, people time, FTEs, and overhead, not to mention higher quality data, not to mention more efficiency as the process, the tables are now running on autopilot. If you're away on holidays or sick or busy, it doesn't matter. These things will be updating automatically. So Power Query, uh, we'll click it. In this case, I'm going to open up a file. Anyways, uh, I won't go over the uh, specifics of what I did here, but basically this is, my, this is my, let's call it my corporate source. It actually is. I just moved it down here for the demo. So I'm going to open it. And of course, you'll get your standard uh, Power Query window. So what it's saying is I've gone to that file and there's one sheet in there. Actually, didn't rather even name it, but it's called Sheet 1. Um, and lo and behold, that's where my data is. So now I've directed this Power Query page to there, and we'll just accept that. Except, uh, as you notice, I made one mistake, which was driving me bonkers to start with. If you notice the names of all my columns, um, they're not the actual names of the rows. They're the names of the columns. So I made a mistake. So I'll go back and redo this. So I just opened another Excel file to show you this. It took me a while to figure out this trick, which is right here, which is, as you can see here right now, these columns, the name of the column is column one, column two, column three, but they actually do have proper names here in the first row here. And that's really what I would like it to use. So I'm just going to do that simple step, um, but obviously it saves you a heck of a lot of trouble later. So let's do that done. So what it's done here is it's brought this file of information in to Excel, into the Excel file you're working at. Looks pretty much the same as any normal Excel file. It's got these query options over here. And of course, what you can see right here is the refresh option. Um, downloads enabled. Um, I could load this to the data model if I'm going to do some modeling, but I'm not in this case. Key thing is the refresh. So now when I build things here in this report, for example, I could go ahead and build a um, some just for the for the heck of it. Build some what are these things called? Pivot tables. Yes, of course, pivot tables. We all love pivot tables. So go ahead, throw a few things in here, etc. Throw in some slicers. So again, I would build the type of product that I want here clean it up, obviously, produce it. But now that it's built, I never need to do this again. The information driving these dashboards now straight on my desktop are coming from that Power Query, which is coming itself from that corporate data file. Now, I just uh, had taken a few minutes to produce a slightly nicer version uh, of this file to see um, what's being done here. So now you can see that the information is being consumed or being brought in from all over the place. And in fact, I've refreshed it to the, the fact that there's a thousand rows uh, of data, as I said, and here's the distribution. So let's assume now that the information has been updated in the corporate source and my manager wants to get an updated report um, or just we just like to post this thing and keep track of it for some reason, whatever, find out where we're spending all our money on alcohol and with whom. And as you recall, I started with this file. This is my, in quotes, corporate data source with a thousand rows of data. It's 89 kilobytes. But let's assume this other file down here with 6,000 rows of data is actually my updated information. Remember that the Power Query is just looking for a file in this location called Liquor Start. Um, so if I change this file and just do a little bit of tweak, you know, I'm playing around this, obviously this isn't the way you would do it in real life. You would simply bring in the new file, let's say you bring it in every week, if that was how often the data changed. The new file comes in every week, replaces the old one, and then the dashboards will automatically update. But I'm going to have to do that manually, so I'm sure you can figure out my logic here. So I'm refreshing the table. As you can now see, it's got 6,000 rows of data. Um, you can also refresh everything that's I built inside it. Now, of course, you can set the file to update automatically on the refreshes. I mean, there's all sorts of controls in there under the query options. Um, 
but I'm not going to cover those because of time constraints here. So now if we look at our file, it's actually got 6,000. Again, this information is now reporting out based on the latest data that's being given. So classic dashboard. Any, anyways, I think the bottom line here for everyone to understand is the importance that Power Query brings in bringing direct linkages to data. No more copy-paste, no more waiting for people to send you a file. Of course, it, in, the basis for this is that the data has to be available in a format that's going to be consistent and um, the metadata, for, you know, for those who understand that concept, the data needs to be of high quality. In other words, if you've got data where people are just putting in things, they're not paying attention to the rules, and again, putting text in numbers, columns, putting in summer in the date field, things like that, um, if the system allows for that, then you're kind of screwed if you've done a a report based on dates because summer isn't something that um, Excel can map and will totally screw up your reports. But I'm more and more I'm finding the data I've got to work with is fine. It's good stuff, so why not use it? And so what thing I found is that you can actually watch, if, this, if you imagine this is the corporate data, and someone has gone in and updated a record. Um, so this is my source file that I'm using to drive it. So here it is in this file. You can see I've changed it to some huge amount, so clearly that's changed the capacity numbers. Now, if I go over to my file here, which is where it's going, let's assume it's on auto-refresh. I'll just do this manually. So it's gone off, of course, it just updates the file. And of course the uh, report refresh would be set on autopilot as well. If I go back to my dashboard, you can see now the capacity has gone up by a substantial amount to reflect that change. So if you have an active data set, everything that's being entered into that data set is now going to be reflected on these reports, which you can share individually by sharing the Excel file. Of course, the connections are in the file, so anyone who's running that report is going to also be using the corporate data. Obviously, if you've used data that is password protected and only accessible to you, no one else is going to be able to get the auto-update feature. But if it's shared on a SharePoint site um, and you set it up to work with your credentials, if, if it is protected, then everyone can access it through the web as a web app through the classic kind of SharePoint dashboard. So again, depending on your data and your needs, you can figure it out. But I encourage people to really get familiar with Power Query. It's so simple, and yet it's so valuable to the, any organization that handles data, because now you have your ETL process through Excel, you have all the tools that you love to use to build reports in Excel, and you can share them all with the dashboards, with the maps, with Power View, locally or on SharePoint. So, perfect solution. So, all in all, a good solution uh, from Microsoft. It's worth taking a look at, and play around with the uh, corporate, the online, and the web one. It's kind of neat to see what you can actually find. Anyways, Best wishes for the new year, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming down the pipe from Microsoft BI.